Hey guys, we're back to do some more standard on ladder, and I wanted to kind of take it back to the mono red uh, AOE aggro deck that I built for the standard event that went ended up going seven and two, and I just kind of reverted everything back to that build, and I really really like this deck. Um, it just feels so good right now, and it's just kind of um, exactly what I want to be doing, and just really just kicking it to uh, control decks, which <laughs> are not my favorite. There, there, there's definitely some very good control decks, but they are certainly, they feel like they're my enemy. Um, and uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mono Red uh, is great against control. So all that said, um, if you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Um, if you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe dropping a comment or a like, or sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like it. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. You guys are the reason that I make these videos, so thank you. All right, let's get back into the deck here. Um, so I will have a link here in the, the description if you want to check out the uh, 7 and 2 run on the standard event with this deck. And I kind of go into a little bit of sort of what it's trying to do. But yeah, just a quick recap. Um, it does have six ways of doing one damage to all uh, opponents and creatures. And then End the Festivities also does one damage to Planeswalkers. So four End the Festivities and two copies of Tectonic Hazard. This is kind of a nod to Boros Convoke being so prevalent in the meta right now. And it's also really great against like Mono White. Um, it can be kind of good against the, the Mirror and just sort of a plethora of other decks. So we're still doing damage to face with it. So it still is at least okay against control. Um, as a result of having a couple fewer creatures, I'm only running three copies of Monstrous Rage. Um, I, you know, it's, it's an amazing card, but I just want to make sure I have enough creatures to slap them on. Um, and then we've got four copies of Mechanized Warfare to make all of the AoE damage even more. So cards like Valdar and Epicure get a little bit better. Um, not only do they help us filter our lands, but with Mechanized Warfare, they're doing an extra damage. And then I did have a look at running the... Um, pyrotechnic uh, performer um, who is a very strong card but it's just a little bit of a different build and I do find that you know getting up to four mana is kind of actually difficult for a really low to the ground mono red deck so you know you can do it on turn four if you you know play it face down on turn three and then flip it up but that's just kind of a little bit too slow for what, I'm, what I want to be doing here and so even though we've got four copies of fugitive code breaker I'm just kind of running it more as a two one um, that has prowess and Feldine is still great. Um, we still get some card advantage off it usually. And then uh, we have a couple copies of Phoenix, Chick, and then Swift Spear and Kumano. So one copy of Squee to kind of go long. And then two Soken Zen and two Mishra's Foundry and 17 Mountains. So 21 total lands. But yeah, I've been really happy with the deck. Let's go ahead and jump in. I've been doing a couple games here on ladder just to kind of get my feet wet a little bit and kind of um, sort of remember how the deck operates, but it is a lot of fun and yeah, it's just very much my play style. So this hand looks great. We've got enough mana for Squee and a couple things to do before then. But it's just really nice just, you know, immediately pedal to the metal, um, just AOE damage getting in there right away. And here if they want to trade with Codebreaker, we're totally fine with that. I assume they don't. Oh, maybe they do. Either way, it's good for us. Um, let's just get Squee going.
All right, um, let's get set up warfare into double festivities here. We can also just attack in with Squee, I guess, and if they decide to block, then we can take it out. Um, but let's just go warfare here first. This way, Squee's representing three damage. We can also attack with Phoenix Chick here. If they want to block that, then we can push the other thing through, and then we could even get it back with enough creatures getting in, so... I think it's fine to get in with both. Every little bit of damage helps. But yeah, there's something that just feels so good about being able to um, to do AoE. Like, we get to blow up their whole board, and it feels amazing. And now they're super dead. Yeah, if you want to just like rank up on ladder, this is a very quick deck. So win or lose, you're going to have fast matches, which is what I love. I really hate those like super long drawn out matches against like blue white control or that was something that really was kind of hard for me to sort of stomach when I was playing mono white aggro. Um, you would just get caught in this place where you couldn't really move forward. You had no reach and they could just take over the game and... Yeah, blue white control, super powerful deck, um, but just sitting there <laughs> is not fun. All right, what are we up against? Um, so here, I think let's put the token on the Phoenix check. I think because like if they play like potentially like the three two or Glissa, this thing could you know slow down on the bottom. So. Also, spreading out our threats a little bit is kind of nice. Okay, so they definitely take Play With Fire here. But then we get to keep pushing. All right, uh, no reason to show him this other mountain yet. Um, yeah, because we don't have Sokens in mana yet. So we'll play this post combat just to keep them guessing. But I think we do push Rage right now, since we have a clear opening, they have no um, open mana, and we can push the damage. And I think we put the Rage, I guess on, hmm, probably on Phoenix Chick, to be honest. Best chance of, like, getting through. Like, it evens the damage out to put it on Swift Spear, but Swift Spear is still, like, a threat. Now if we draw into land, we've got Sokens and mana. Yeah, and there's the Glissa that I expected. So having that flyer in the air, pushing all, representing all of our damage is super important. Okay, 
Okay, we've got Soken Zen, so we're definitely doing that. Now they can kill the etching of Kumano, and we're still pushing damage, so we're feeling pretty good. March is nasty, that, that life gain, oof. I need some help from the top of the deck here. Okay, so we can play this face down. Um, actually, we could just play this and attack with everything and then bring back the Phoenix check. So they block Code Breaker, they take three, five? Yeah, that feels a little better, actually. Now most things are off the top except land gets us there. Oof, man, the life gain is brutal. So yeah, here I think we just, um, let's play out Swift Spear. Actually, is there anything that we could draw that would take four mana? I don't think so. So I think it's okay to hold Swift Spear and just attack with Phoenix Chick. Maybe lull them into a false sense of security. Yeah, I don't think we play Swift Spear here. Trying to think, I guess if they like kill the Phoenix chick and then we draw like Squee. Or like, yeah, actually there's a, if they do kill the Phoenix chick like main phase and we draw into like another like two drop that has haste, it's marginally better to have the Swift Spear out. So I think we just play it. Not sure what they're doing with Glissa. Trying to like take a counter off of Phoenix Chick, maybe? It just seems kind of counterproductive unless they've got a board wipe. Maybe they have like Gix's command. Yeah, but we're, we're never blocking that. Okay, Monstrous Rage, I think, exactly gets us there, because they block three on the ground, one gets through, plus the four on top, that should be it. Nice.
It definitely made us fight for it, gaining all that life. But what's really nice is that, um, like, the AoE spells also are great against Bat. Like, if they take something with Bat, you can just blow it away with the AoE spell and then get back whatever you need. Honestly, I think this is probably my, my favorite deck for for ladder. I just um, I just despise long control matchups. Um, they're great decks and I respect them, but um, just sitting there for like 20, 30 minutes, just, yeah, that's just not me. Okay, hand looks great. Could be Boros, could be Mono Red. Guess we find out. Yeah, Feldon feels really good here. Boros it is. So we could play with Fire plus End the Festivities, and I think that's actually a decent idea here, in case they have like Knight Errant of Eos or whatever kind of else kind of nonsense. I think just slowing them down is super helpful. Resetting them like this just feels so good. Yeah, and Kumano is just so amazing with this deck. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna do it. A wing feels great. Yeah. So I hope you guys check this deck out. Um, I'll have a link in the description again for the um, standard video uh, that kind of goes over a little bit more and you get to see that full kind of epic fight. Um, but uh, let's take a look at the stats. Okay, so we are currently 75% win rate, six wins and two losses on ladder. So 50-50 with uh, Boros Aggro, or Boros Convoke. 50-50 with Golgari mid-range. 100% um, against Mono Blue. 100% against Esper Control, I think. 100% um, against... Um, I think this is maybe some version of Toxic. Um, and then 100% against Gruel um, Pump Aggro. So yeah. Thanks again, guys, for watching. And you guys are awesome. So thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.